Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about two different kinds of graphs. Um, they are the line graph and the circle graph. First, I'm going to talk about the line graph. A line graph is specifically used for marking changes over time, always used for changes over time. So when you make a, a graph that involves time, time always has to go on the bottom of the graph or on the x-axis. So I'm going to do snowfall from October to February. And notice that I decided to go start at 15 and then go by fives. Since that's not a consistent interval, I'm counting by fives, but I didn't start at zero. I'm going to put what's called a graph break in this in this graph. If you're not going to have a consistent interval here, you need to put that little Z looking thing, and you'll see those on graphs if they don't start at zero. That's just indicating that I didn't have anything below 15, so I want to start at 15, but I recognize the fact that I did not count by fives. I missed the five and the 10, okay? So now I'm just going to put a dot at where the snowfall was in October. Let's say there was just only 15 inches or centimeters, whatever. And in November, there was about 18. In December, we had a lot of snow, 25. January, so far, let's pretend this was from last year. Um, it was super snowy. And then in February, there was barely anything. So you're going to put some dots at the frequency of how much it was. And then all you do is connect them. That's it. Super simple. You can see that the most amount of snow was uh, in January. It progressively got higher and then all of a sudden the snowfall just dropped off from January to February. The big part here is that line graphs are used to calculate changes over time. All right, the next one is a circle graph. You're very familiar with circle graphs, sometimes called a pie graph. Okay, and what this is, is it is always marking um, parts of a whole. Okay, we're always talking about it being adding up to 360 degrees, which is the total amount of the circle, or adding up to 100% of whatever it is we're talking about. So I'm going to take a bag of M&Ms and make a circle graph of the colors. So let's say I had red, green, blue, yellow, and brown. And I made a tally chart of how many of each there were. And this is what I got from my uh, tally, okay? So I am going to um, calculate these as fractions. The first thing you're going to do, I'm going to see if this turning the slide off makes a difference. Eh, not really. Um, I just don't like the glare that you guys are seeing here, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it. So we'll just deal with the glare. And I apologize. Okay, so... First, I have to count up all my tallies and see how many total I have. So I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 5, 6, 27 total M&Ms. So red is 3 out of 27. Green is 5 out of 27. Blue is 7 out of 27. Yellow is 2 out of 27. And brown is 10 out of 27. And once I've turned these into fractions, I'm going to turn them into percentages. Okay, so what you do is you divide top by bottom. So on my calculator, I'm going to go 3 divided by 27 is 0.11111 for repeating. So I'm going to have 11%. 5 divided by 27 is 0.185. I'm going to round that up to 0.19. Now at the end, these percentages have to add up to 100. So when I made a, a decision to round this from 18.5 up to 19, I may end up over 100. So if I know I rounded this one up, I should round the next one down if, if it needs to be rounded. So I have seven, uh, seven divided by 27 is 0.259. Well, that's close to 0.26 or 26%. And then two out of 27 is 0.074. So we'll do 7%. And 10 out of 27 is 37%. Now, before I go any further, I have to make sure that these percentages add up to 100. So I'm going to take 11 plus 19 plus 26 
plus 7 plus 37, and I get exactly 100, so that's good. Now, if I would have gotten more or less than 100, I would have just had to round these up or down, depending. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is change these into degrees, okay? So in order to change something into a degree, you just take your percentage times 360, okay? So the degrees are going to be 0.11 times 360 is 39.6. I'm going to say 40 degrees. 0.19 times 360. What I'm doing is calculating the percentage of the circle. And so we take these as decimals. 0 0.11 times 360 is 40. 0 0.19 times 360 is 68.4. So we'll round that to 68 degrees. 0 0.26 times 360 is 93.6, so we'll round that up to 94 degrees. 7%, remember, is 0 0.07. If you do it as 0 0.7, you're doing 70%, and that'll be too big. So 0 0.07 times 360 is 25.2, so we'll say 25 degrees. And then 37% is 0 0.37 times 360 is 133.2. So 133, these degrees have to add up to 360. So I'm going to add them up. And again, if they don't add up, I need to round appropriately. So I'm going to go 40 plus 68 plus 94 plus 25 plus 133 is exactly 360. So you always want to double check those. Otherwise, they won't fit into your graph. And then we draw a circle. And if this was a face-to-face -face class, I would most likely have some protractors and compasses, and we'd be measuring these exactly. But we're just going to estimate here. <clears throat> Knowing that a 90-degree angle is a perfect right corner, I do have one of those right here. Uh, no, that's 25 degrees, not 25%. Um, 90 right here is the closest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with blue and just estimate it a little bit more than 90. When we label, we always put the percentage. So blue is about is 26%. If it was a perfect right angle, it would be uh, 90 degrees. So I made it a little bit bigger, maybe a little too big, but we're just kind of estimating here. And then I've got a um, 133. That's going to be a big angle. Um, 68 degrees. Uh, cutting the circle in half is 180. So if I take 68 plus 94, I get 182. No, 68, sorry, 68 plus 94 is 100, yeah, 162. 180 is all the way straight, so I'm going to make it a little less than all the way straight. I include my green. You can also think of that as the percentages. 50% would be half of the circle. I've got 26 plus 19 which is 45%, so I still have this little tiny bit right here. Um, we'll just add that extra 7 and make it a little bit more. So that is going to be yellow. And again, this is just an estimation. Um, brown is 133 degrees and red is 40 degrees. So I'm just going to estimate here. Forty is red and the rest is brown. It's not the greatest, but um, if you have to make any graphs like this on your in your assignments, I give you a graph maker so you can use put input the data into the graph maker and make them. Really what I wanted you to get out of this was how to calculate from the raw data of how many you turn it into a fraction then top divided by bottom to turn them into a percent, and then the decimal portion of the percent times the degrees gives you the 360. Okay, so reading a circle graph is not going to be new information either. You guys have read circle graphs before. Um, remembering some key ingredients that things have to add up. So if I give you a graph that doesn't add up to 100%, then there's going to be some misleading information, which is a whole other unit that we're going to be talking about. So um, look for things always to add up. If there's any missing data and I ask you, for example, I've got a graph and one of the pieces is not labeled with its percentage, you could easily calculate it just by subtracting the other percentages from 100. Alrighty.
that is getting to the end of the second unit. Good job, you guys.